Okay, so I'm going to tell you the strategy I use for getting marks of excellence. I have around 300 tanks, and I have marks of excellence on over 150 tanks. Uh, so the first thing I do is I mark all of them with the primary label. The ones that have the primary label are the vehicles that I do not have a mark of excellence on. So usually I only play those vehicles. The next thing that I do is I make sure I have everything equipped properly, meaning I will use improved equipment if I can. And I try to do the best I can. You know, I'm not going to go overboard and put something that uh, I can't afford. Uh, I don't, most of my marks of excellence, I did not use the improved equipment. This is actually a new method that I've been doing the past week. And normally I do not use directives and normally I do not use the food consumable. It all depends on how much silver I have, how I feel, uh, how much I have in stock, etc. So my theory is to use the improved equipment because you have to demount it with bonds. I'm going to try to get three marks on this vehicle. You can see I already got two marks. And I'm going to try to get three marks on this vehicle so that I can demount that uh, coated optics and then use it on another vehicle. So all the vehicles that I'm currently working on, this one doesn't have it. I need to add it. So I'm not playing that vehicle right now. I'm playing the four that have uh, the improved equipment. And like I said, I'm going to play until I don't see any more change. The other thing that I do on a regular basis, not every day, I reset these values to see what my progress is. For example, this one is at 85.47%. And I usually play to get the, the daily doubles. Uh, today we have a three times bonus for additional victories, so it doesn't matter. Uh, the other thing that I do is I always obviously put a good crew in, but not all of my tanks have a good crew. For example, if you look at this vehicle, you can see that the crew is not good on this vehicle at all. I have gotten marks of excellence with a bad crew, so I don't follow it very strictly. And my crew is not always at 100%. You can see this one says 111%. This one says 116 I do try to make sure that I'm not playing stock. I try to make sure that everything has the highest penetration gun, the best engine. I know there's people that prefer derp guns. I almost always play with the highest penetration gun. And I almost never fire gold rounds. I mean, I could play game after game after game. You won't see me firing gold rounds. I could play a thousand games in a row and I won't fire gold rounds. I didn't even have gold rounds on my tanks. However, as you get closer to getting a third gun mark, your reliance on gold rounds is more important. Uh, so far, I've gotten all of my two marks without gold rounds. I've got maybe 30 tanks with two marks. Originally, I was just trying to get one mark on every tank, and then I was going to redo all of my crew, redo all of my equipment, and then get two marks on every tank, redo all the crew, and then get three. And the reason why is because I want the best crew when I go for the three mark. And I start at tier five and then do tier six and tier seven and tier eight going up again because I want to have the best crew when I do the higher tier vehicles. And I save all of my combat exper experience because the higher tier vehicles are more likely to need free EXP to upgrade the modules, except for tier 10 in general. So those are some of the basic strategies that I use. I used to play every tank once per game just to get the daily double. However, here's where the issue came in. I think I'm at a disadvantage if I don't use the improved or the bonded equipment. And the reason why is because the top players use it. You're competing against the top players when you're going for your three marks. They're going to be using food. They're going to be using directives. They're going to be using bonded equipment. And they're going to have great crew. So you might need to do the same as you get closer and closer to the third mark. Keep in mind, they are also platooning. They're firing gold rounds. They, they're playing on the server 
when it's optimal. Like for me, I get the, the marks of excellence when there's more people on the server. Right now, there's only 8,000 people on the server. I would not play to get a three mark with only 8,000 people on the server because the game is too unpredictable. When we've got 20,000 people, I know where everyone's going to go. I have better games. Uh, same with ranked battles. So you really got to play your A game when you go for the three marks. Uh, the reason why this is important is because if you want to demount the improved equipment, there's a cost. You have to pay 200 bonds. So the way I see it is I'm going to play 30, 40, 50 games, and I'm going to just pay the 200 bonds to demount it and switch it to another tank. But I want to make sure I got that third gun mark on this vehicle. I will tell you that it was easy for me to get two gun marks on this vehicle. Very easy. Same with the uh, T-50. Haven't gotten there yet, but it's been easy. I see it climbing very quickly. Uh, there's only a few tanks where I have difficulty. I would say out of my 300 tanks, there's been like four or five that I'm concerned I might not be able to get three gun marks on. And then, you know, it's no big deal. I really don't care that much. And it's going to take a couple of years to do it. It's not something you can do in a short amount of time. Uh, I would say I've probably done 50 tanks, just one gun mark in the last six months. Maybe not even 50. So i got a long way to go. Uh, if you look at these vehicles, you're going to see, like, for example, this one does not have the food consumable. This one also doesn't. So sometimes I use it and sometimes I don't. The directives really don't give you that much. This only gives you like a 10 meter bonus. But the, um, the food consumable is a bigger bonus. And the other thing is I use uh, some equipment that you want to optimize either damage or spotting. This is not optimized for either because I have two pieces of equipment that do not increase damage or spotting. One of them is for concealment and the other one is so that I don't get tracked as often. <clears throat> because if you get tracked you could end up being shot and often you lose a game because they track you. Uh, so what I could do is I could add vents or something like Binox that increases spotting ability. If it gets to the point where I'm close to getting the three mark I might just switch it out for vents. I will use my uh, improved equipment here. You see you've got the bounty ventilation and the venting system. I will add one of those if I have to in order to get the uh, three mark. So another matter that's important is that if you look at regular equipment, it has a certain value. If you use, for example, the improved equipment, the bonus that you get is almost like adding another equipment slot. For example, vents add, by default, I think it's 5% to all crew skills. With this one, you get 8.5%. That's a huge difference. And especially if you move this into the right slot, maybe you get even more than 8.5%. So it's almost like getting an extra equipment slot. So if you use improved equipment for everything, it's like playing with four or five equipment slots. The other thing that I will do, if it gets to the point where I need to three mark, I just might go in with all gold rounds just to finish the game off. It does get a little bit slower going for the three mark. I've noticed that, you know, you can go up 2% in a good battle, but when you go for the second mark, you, you don't get that. And when you go for the third mark, you don't get that. It just, it creeps along, I guess you could say. So you do got to put in your A game, and uh, you can't be as risky necessarily. I still take risks where I say, oh, I got an autoloader, I'm going to take a second shot, and then when I'm reloading for the third shot, everybody shoots at me and I take a ton of damage. So that's an example of an unnecessary risk. I played clan battles before, and when you play a clan battle, you don't take those risks. you gotta, you got to play that way in random battles. Okay, so that's a little bit about how I do my gun marks. The big thing right now is that I'm focusing on a small number of tanks, three to five tanks, 
every day and I'm sacrificing the times two EXP for the first victory. However, I might change the policy on the weekends. So the sacrifice for keeping the bonded equipment for the second and third mark is that um, you lose your additional EXP with the first time victory bonus. Uh, one of the things that I did to compensate for it is I have been getting the five time victory tokens. When you have the tank rewards, you can pick the tokens as a prize. And I've been picking those just to get that extra bonus to compensate for the loss. And also, the EXP is not going to help me get new modules because I've already got everything. I've got virtually every tank in the tech tree. And my crews are all five skills or, or six or seven. So it only gives a little bit of a bonus to crew skills. Therefore, I'm not giving up that much by giving up the two times victory bonus. Okay, so if you have any questions or comments, and we know you do, please post below.